Hey, this is Dennis with Second Chance Taco. We're going to take on a, a request right now. Uh, this one comes from my friend and a viewer in Germany, Braun. And Braun said that uh, he's about to get a Jigmaster 500S. And he wanted to know if the servicing and the like is the same and, uh, and what he should be aware of in terms of the uh, uh, any differences to the reel. Well, the, the short answer is inside the the side plate to the 500S, there is no difference. Uh, however, the, the 500S has a difference in its design. Its design is that the take apart screw is on the non gear side. And this by far is the weakest frame system that uh, Penn designed. And that's probably why this product hasn't lasted that long. What it is, is unfortunate that uh, you have the single side here, the side plate which comes off, and that kind of reveals that you have studs that this sits on, similar in design and nature if you will, but the only thing structurally holding this side together essentially is this, this metal band here. And it, uh, that has an effect, I'll put that back on this side, it has an effect when you go to, to see the other side because the other side only has four mounting screws versus the traditional six mounting screws uh, that come on the other side plate for the um, uh, the Jig Masters with the single take apart screw there. So there's there's less support. Typically what happens is you get flex in this reel and this uh, reel seat buckles. It, it either turns up or turns down. You can actually see a little bit of that is happening here. That's not square. If you put a straight edge through it, it's starting to turn inward. And eventually what happens, it kind of, it tilts on a uh, on an angle. Uh, kind of hard to show the angle, but it'll tilt. Instead of being square like this, it will tilt like, like that. I guess uh, you're not seeing that either, but the, uh, the tilt will cause the frame to buckle and you hear that chirp? That's what that's what happens here when the frame gets out of alignment. The answer on this one, uh, the, the short-term fix is to replace the real seat. I have one of them around. I'm going to uh, to go ahead and, and well, it's the wrong one. I'm going to replace the real seat to take care of this particular issue. What I like to do more so than that is get the traditional side of the Jigmaster bolt it in on that side, take the ring off of the 500S and bolt this into the other side so that you, you can strengthen this support, which is the one that's weak. But at any rate, Braun wanted to know if there was any difference in the tune-up. Uh, let's go do the tune-up. This is one of those reels that belongs to the set of 80 reels that I've been working on for the, uh, the captain out on Long Island. We're getting down to the end of that. So this side plate needs to be tuned up anyway, so we'll uh, we'll go ahead and do that. So um, let's let's do that. You can see I've already started by taking the handle off. I've been cleaning these uh, reels, and what I don't clean uh, with the chemicals is the gear side plate and internals. You can say this one's pretty well uh, been used, but that doesn't mean we can't uh, tune it up. We're going to do that right now. I'll start, uh, as I generally do, try to get some of that surface grease off. I'm going to use a penetrating oil here as a cleaner just to uh, get the old grease out. These are chromed bridges, or, so uh, they, they tend to clean up pretty nicely. And then underneath you'll find that uh, even though uh, it has a different structure for mounting, the interior parts are the same, so let's go ahead and take the bridge off. When I take the bridge off, I like to make sure that that free spool release is in, uh, in free spool, spool mode. So I'm pulling everything up there. That way it won't get interfered with when I do the, uh, uh, the rebuild down below. And in this case, the, uh, the project with the 80 Jig Masters has been going well. Uh, the reels are in fairly decent shape internally. A lot of broken handles, a lot of broken springs, like the, uh, uh, the free spool release spring. 
Uh, but overall, uh, you'll see multiple reasons for failure. In this case, I can see right away one of the failure points here was we had broken line in the reel. Well, that broken line, when it uh, gets on the gear, is going to cause a skip. And uh, we'll take care of that as part of this service. So let's take the part off there. The top part, simply push down so that you can remove the jack. And then release so that you can pull out the, the springs for the yoke, the yoke, and the, uh, and the pinion gear. We got a lot of dirt under there, so let's let's go ahead and clean that up. I'm going to do the same thing I just did. I'm going to take a spray. I'm pushing the side plate, uh, the bridge screws out of the side plate here, putting them into my parts tray. It's nothing more than the bottom of a plastic jug. And uh, let's go ahead and spray this down. I do notice that there's another piece of, of broken line up here. So there's no question that as this reel was cranking away, that line kind of broke off and uh, it's quite possible that that uh, line uh, was what caused this reel to fail. So what Captain Jim was telling me was uh, when the reel stops working he, uh, he doesn't, uh, he just tells the mates get it off the rod, put another reel on that rod, get it fishing again and throw it in the bucket and we'll, we'll get it fixed. So he doesn't know exactly what's going wrong with each reel. Doesn't matter to him. He just kind of keep, the, keep those rods fishing so that uh, his customers are happy and, uh, and he can solve the, the issue with why it failed at a different time. And I guess that different time is right now. So I'm using a cotton swab here. And while I'm doing the cleaning, I want to just take a moment to, to thank our hometown heroes, the folks that are uh, working day in and day out to keep us safe from the pandemic. Those include our EMTs, our hospital workers, our doctors, our nurses, our law enforcement, uh, fire and rescue, and everybody who's playing a role here uh, to help us keep us safe from the pandemic and uh, help those that uh, may have become uh, affected by this, uh, this COVID outbreak. And please do our part. Let's stay safe. Let's maintain our social distance. Let's uh, wear the masks and do the other things that we're being asked to do. And above all things, let's, let's be patient. Uh, we're, we all are suffering from COVID fatigue at the moment. Uh, we all wish that things would get back to normal sooner rather than later. The hope and prayers are that the, uh, that vaccine will, will go a long way towards doing that. And uh, in the meantime, we just gotta wait our turn uh, to, to get that and do what's responsible. Uh, while we are waiting. So thanks to all of you that are having an, uh, an effect on, uh, on the combating of this. And my special thanks to you is if, uh, if you are one of those aforementioned hometown heroes and you have a reel that uh, needs to be serviced and you don't have the time to do it yourself, well, you can send it to me and I'll service it for, uh, for free and I'll make sure that reel gets back to you ready to go fishing when you have the time to do that. All right, well, we scrubbed up this case pretty good here. You'll, you'll notice that there's a couple of differences. There's these two inset pieces below here. Those are going to fit over the mounting screws and the side plate there. But other than that, the, the side plate is fairly, pretty much the same thing. But, Braun, I did want to show that to you just so you, that you're confident as you're going to take this apart that, uh, that you know uh, what you're doing there. I'm going to inspect the pinion gear next because we had that trap line. Sometimes that trap line will knock a tooth out of alignment here and if that's the case then the gear is going to need to be replaced. I did talk about common failures with that boat and one of them is the main gear. Uh, we've had some common failures that replaced quite a few of those main gears. Uh, but then again it's age too, right? These, these reels are probably fishing 150, 200 days a year for multiple years. Uh, most of these are made in the USA Jig Masters, so they've been out there 10, 15 years, uh, 150 to 200 days of fishing each time, each year. They will, uh, they will get tired, and uh, they do need to be serviced. Okay, I'm going to take the, the sleeve off next, and there's a lot of dirt in this one, and I don't. Uh, 
This is what I'll call more than usual from what I've been seeing. I'll clean that up. Let's get the main gear assembly off then. That can just pull off. Now sometimes these trap. And if they trap, just push down so that you can take them off one by one. That's kind of what I'm doing here. These have the uh, EHC 100, so over the course of time these have been serviced. It would be very unusual, I think, on a commercial boat like uh, Captain Jim has to not have these drag washers uh, serviced in the, in the time that the wheels have been on the boat, that's for sure. And even though I'm, I'm pretty sure he's only doing bottom fishing, it doesn't look like he runs into a lot of bluefish and the like here because bluefish will tear up the reels and these look like they're in pretty good condition. All right, I've taken off the, uh, the main gear so I can get underneath and start cleaning that. So Braun, take pictures along the way. That's one of my uh, suggestions, as you know, from watching the channel, but take pictures if you have any questions. And these schematics are available on uh, mysticparts.com. So if you, uh, if you need a schematic before you start, or if you've taken a reel apart and you're not quite sure where it's, uh, how to put it back together again, go grab the schematic. It's a pictorial view of what we've just done here in terms of how this all comes apart. And uh, that will help you uh, when you go to, to re uh, reassemble the reel. All right, well, this line trapped under here. I'm, I was wondering why I'm having a tough time. And here's some more line tra trapped under that um, pinion uh, or gear sleeve. I hope you can see it there. So I'm going to knock the pin out here that holds that sleeve on. Just using a punch to push that through. And then if you can't get it through all the way because it's kind of jammed up here with that broken line, use a pliers to work it out gently. And I know that there's some tension on this already. I can just feel it. So and then once you pull that pin out, you can pull the shaft off. And we can get that broken line out there, which you can see has just been wrapped around the shaft. So that will definitely cause a performance problem, and that will cause a mate to uh, to take that reel off the pole and uh, set it aside for a time when it can be fixed. So that's what we have there. Now I'm just going to clean that up. Let's get the old grease out of there. We're going to do a shot of grease into the bridge sleeve. And this bridge sleeve is rounded. It's uh, probably not holding the handle well, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to replace that sleeve. As you might figure, uh, with the uh, with this project, uh, there's a lot of uh, pieces and parts needed, and I did order the extra bridge sleeve. So we'll go ahead and we'll grab a new bridge sleeve here. So those parts are still available as well on MrParts.com. And you can see the difference if you hold this up. This one's been all rounded. That will not hold the handle. You need the, the two flat sides here uh, to, to get a good grip on the, that handle. So we'll just, uh, we'll just finish this little bit here that's been kind of all greased up with that uh, problem with that broken piece of line in there. Go ahead and grab my towel to get the last of the wiping done there. I have my new gear sleeve. We're going to use pen precision wheel grease to uh, coat the stem. And we can put the new gear sleeve on and we can put the new pin in. And then when you get that pin in, you want to push in to make sure that it gets all the way in, that it mounts properly. Sometimes you, you're going to, need, going to need to tap it a little bit. But it has to clear the shoulder here or you won't get the main gear back on. I think we're okay there. 
Let's go ahead underneath then. Well, one of the things it looks like that happened here as well is that the um, that line shredded the washer that goes under the gear. Well, as you might imagine, I have it. I just need to find it. Okay, typical. It was right under my nose and I couldn't find it. So here you go. We have a, uh, a hard washer which goes under there. But before we do that, we want to load our anti-reverse dog. Clean and load. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to get it around the post, pressing down, drop of oil inside the post, drop of oil on the sleeve where it's going to rotate, and we have our hard washer which is going to hold that dog in place. Now we come over to our main gear, and we know these are these have been upgraded from a washer perspective. Let's check the teeth on that because again, that broken line got in there. You want to do a couple of things. You want to make sure that the, there's no more broken line in there. And a good way to do that is to take a hard bristle brush like this, clean it through. And then you want to re-grease. So we'll do the same thing again. We'll go get our brush. I'm going to get a good coating of that pen precision wheel grease, a couple of spots. The, the smaller pinion gear is going to move that around. So just get, get it healthy, but you don't have to overload on that. And we can put our first one on. If the drag washers are in good condition. You just want to make sure that the metal washers are clean of any debris. There's a little bit of dried grease on that one. Let's get that out. So you have two round ones, they go high and low. And then you have one in the middle, which is called the eared washer. And that goes in the middle. And I'm just checking to make sure we don't have that broken um, line inside the drag stack. That stuff can get all over pretty easily. The eared washer in the middle sits in two indentations in the main gear. Last one up. Now these are HT100 drag washers. They don't require uh, dry grease, which, but you can use that if you like. Sometimes you'll see me do that with the Cal's Universal Dry Grease. And we'll put the cap washer on, and we can put our ferrule or, or spacer on. Okay, now let's go set this side plate up and grab our two springs, put those in the cavities where the bridge screws are going to come through, a little bit of grease and make sure that we get that bearing side there and get some up top on the eccentric. Take our yoke and pinion gear. Push down, clean off that little excess on the jack, load that to the top position, and snap that over. And that's how you set your jack. Now we can push the entire assembly down. We'll take our rebuilt bridge, insert that. And then there's two studs on the side plate that are going to snap in place. You just heard them snap. There's one here and one on the other side. Let's make sure that they snap in. And we have our four bridge screws. There's two threaded and two partially threaded. The threaded ones go on the bottom. The partially threaded ones provide a surface, a smooth surface, for the uh, springs to ride on up top. I'm just going to tighten these down here because I have a 
feeling from that uh, bridge screw there that the yoke is a little bit out of alignment. That's okay. That gets fixed easy enough. Use that pin that you were using to kind of free up the um, bridge sleeve just to center it. You got to get through the hole in that yoke there. Okay, so we're still a little tight. So, so take a visual on it when you uh, when you're not connecting right away. Sometimes coming in from the back just to push that down a little bit will help. And then we should be able to set this. There we go. That one's set, so one more to go. Just clean off that little bit of, of dirt on this. Want to do the same thing here, use a centering pin. Make sure you're clear. We should be able to get this one in. There we go, I just felt it start. And then the last thing I do with this, uh, put a little bit of the pen rod and reel cleaner on there. Grab a paper towel and just uh, work off the grease that probably got transferred from my glove, but also has been on this reel for some time now. That'll just kind of restore the luster to this. And uh, I'm going to do other things, as I mentioned. We're going to stop it here. This is just how to rebuild the side plate as a guide for Braun. I'm going to, uh, as I mentioned, I'm going to take this side plate off of this reel. I'm going to find a conventional uh, chassis for the reel. Like this one and uh, we are going to swap out this side plate for the side plate that's on this reel and then we will be able to mount this to a traditional side where you have the the strengthened side plate here and uh, as best as you can do on this side plate to secure that frame so that it doesn't uh, doesn't buckle again so okay so I did take a moment and uh, off off camera and I did what I said I was going to do. I removed the trim ring from this side. I found a uh, burgundy side plated frame rail and uh, took the traditional six, six nut or six screw uh, mounting on this side to strengthen the weakness that's inherent in this one. And then I changed over the trim ring from this one, removing the, uh, the original one on the red sided one replaced it with the one that comes on the, uh, the, the 500S and uh, settled for bolting the four sides on that. So I have a much stronger reel that shouldn't result in the collapse of this reel seat. So there you go. That's how you, uh, you deal with a, uh, a 500S in terms of taking the side plate apart and servicing it. And uh, that's if you want to make that conversion to strengthen your uh, your weak side plate over here that will uh, stop this reel seat from buckling, then uh, if you have a spare frame around, uh, you can go work it that way. So uh, again, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you did, please like it. If you want to see more of these, please subscribe. Uh, if you're like Braun and you have a question on this reel or any particular reel, uh, go ahead and leave it in the comments section. I do try to reply to all and if, uh, if I happen to have a reel where I can use a, uh, a reel to demonstrate uh, a solution to your question, I'll certainly go do it like we've done here. And then um, finally, if you are a first responder and want to take advantage to my offer, which is good through the end of January, then please contact me on the uh, business card that follows. For those of you that would like a reel serviced, uh, and are not a first responder, well, contact me the same way. Send me a message on my email account, and I'll be happy to, uh, to give you that information regarding the uh, how to uh, send the reel in for repair. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.